I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade. Cue the music. This drunken little German monk. Well, Irish for a day. <laughs> He's intoxicated with himself. Yeah, but what podcaster isn't? Sober him. Lighten up, Francis. <laughs> I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade, a weekly theological podcast where we sit down at the kitchen table, we grab ourselves an ice cold beer, and we talk about theology. Lutheran Lemonade to make glad the heart of man. And on this particular episode, you listening on SoundCloud can't see, but you watching on Facebook can. I have a nice, tall glass of Irish green beer. Because for this episode of Lutheran Lemonade, we're going to get ahead of the jump on this one. We're going to talk about St. Patrick. Now, St. Patrick's Day is coming up on March 17th. And I use the word according to its dictionary definition. And we're, so, we're, Ryan's going to say a swear. Uh, we're going to talk briefly about what I would call the bastardization of St. Patrick's Day by the United States. I would love to hear a little bit more about St. Patrick's Day in Ireland, but what we're really going to talk about, what Christians ought to talk about, whenever it's the observance of a saint, we should talk about what they believe, taught, and confessed. We should talk about the bold proclamation they made of Jesus Christ and him crucified. And with St. Patrick, we certainly can do that. So where can you find Lutheran lemonade? Well... <laughs> wherever great beer is sold. Uh, no, <laughs> you can find Lutheran Lemonade on soundcloud.com forward slash Lutheran Lemonade. That airs every Thursday evening. Again, another late episode because I'm recording it on Thursday evening. Okay, sir. Uh, and on Friday evenings, you can watch the video footage. If you want to see what, see, see what that glass of green beer looks like or the books that I have sitting on the table with me today, definitely head on over to YouTube and look for 1517 Films. You'll see the circle with the word 1517 in it and the word films underneath in blue and white, my favorite color being blue. Although maybe today, maybe for St. Patrick's Day, green can be my favorite color. Uh, favorite color number two, you're on the bench. Or you're up, blue, take a seat. Um, yep, that's that's how we're going to do that now. St. Patrick's Day in the United States, well, for kids, it's about four-leaf clovers and leprechauns. For adults, it's about getting drunk on green beer and food coloring. It's about Irish pride. It's about dyeing uh, a river in Chicago green. It's about wearing green to work. It's about all sorts of, uh, of craziness. I have to believe in Ireland. I maintain hope that it's more about uh, pride. Pride in one's nation, pride in one's heritage, pride even, I dare say, in one's ethnicity. I have to chuckle every time I listen to that bunk, bump music and uh, Pope Leo from the 2003 Luther movie is like, this drunken little German monk, and I'm listening to it every time going, dude, look at the nose, look at my hands moving, I am obviously an Italian man. <laughs> So pride in one's history and heritage, uh, certainly, and I hope that is the case in Ireland on St. Patrick's Day. But St. Patrick, um, well, he's a, what, is, what would we say, a 5th century bishop? Um, he's got a fascinating story, and so we'll talk a little bit about his story. And a lot um, of, of what we're going to talk about is actually covered here. So shameless plug here. This is not my book. This is by Pastor William Whedon. You've heard me mention him on this podcast before. It's called Celebrating the Saints. This is an incredible book. It's a, just not even really a daily devotion, but you just go through... And if there's an observance of a saint uh, for that day, like this one in big letter says March 17th, today we remember and thank the Blessed Trinity for St. Patrick, missionary to Ireland. And so from this, we learn that St. Patrick was born in Roman Britain around AD 389. We learned that he grew up uh, in... Okay, so this is weird. Roman Britain, right? So this is 389. So this is the, near the end of the 4th century. And he lives in what would now be called Britain, uh, but he's not British, right? He's Roman. Uh, and he lives in this culture that was pagan, 
uh, had these old gods and old rituals and old superstitions and old cantations and and now it's been christianized but it's still distinctly roman this is the world that he lived in uh we also learn <clears throat> that uh how does pastor whedon say it the borders of the empire were fraying i'm quoting from um from his book celebrating the saints uh, this is on page 52 the borders of the empire were fraying fast. Raiders from Ireland pillaged the coast and carried Patrick back to them as a slave. Sent to herd pigs, Patrick served six years and pondered his fate and his faith. Led by a dream to escape his captivity, he headed to the sea. Since he had no money to pay for a voyage, he would not submit to the sailors' lewd suggestions. Long story short, basically they said, suck our nipples and we'll let you on the boat. And he... Uh, for piety to Christ, denied it until they allowed him passage anyways, uh, and he, uh, he escaped his slavery. He made his way to France, he became a monk and a priest, he was elevated to bishop, and he returned to Ireland, the land of his captivity, in 433 to set, this is beautiful, he returned to the land of his captivity, about 433, to set his captors free from their slavery to idolatry. In this labor, he spent the rest of his days. So this, uh, I highly recommend you get a copy of Celebrating the Saints. It's a very simple book. And of course, um, March 17th, uh, the day uh, of his death. Most uh, days of the saints are observed on the day uh, of their death or the day of their their temporal death and entering into eternal life, I think would be a fair way to say it as Christians. So while we got a little bit of history on St. Patrick, which is always good, um, what we need, I think what we should focus on for St. Patrick's Day is that he returned to the land of his captivity to set his captives free. St. Patrick was, was a Christian. He was a Christian when he was captured. He was a, a Christian when he served as a slave. He was a Christian when he escaped. He was a Christian uh, when he studied theology, when he became a bishop. And he felt, and we can argue about how it happened and what it means, but what we know for sure is he certainly felt called to go back to the land of his captivity to set those captives free. And when, when we talk about, oh, well, he saw a vision, he had a dream, we're not going to wander off into a conversation about charismatic, charismatic gifts. What we're going to say is that God used Patrick wherever he went. And Patrick proclaimed the word of God to these people. And what St. Patrick is most known for today in the church, at least in the Lutheran church, I can't speak to other traditions, is his strong stance on the doctrine of the Trinity. Now, it's interesting that St. Patrick's Day is coming up, and one of the things that's happening in Christian circles today is everybody's losing their mind over that weird musclehead Steve Furtick over at Elevation Church who confessed just recently the, the, the heresy of modalism. Now, it, modalism is that God is not three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, yet one God. He is three modes or forms, uh, as Furtick would say. So he talked about Jesus. It was good that Jesus would leave, so then he would send the Holy Spirit. And rather than just letting the text say what it says in the context of what the church has always believed, that Jesus is ascending to heaven and will send the Holy Spirit. No, 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 no. Jesus isn't leaving you. He's changing forms. This is stupid. This is modalism. That's modalism, Patrick. No. <laughs> oh, that's modalism, Patrick. Oh. Donald and Cromwell, Cromwell what, I, I don't know who they're, how they're called. I don't know. Go find Lutheran satire on YouTube. Um, bad analogy, St. Patrick's bad analogies. Now, what's interesting is anytime we see an icon of St. Patrick, he's often holding up a three-leaf clover. This is because, as I stated, he is notorious for his defense of the doctrine of the Trinity. But the three-leaf clover is a terrible, terrible analogy. There's Look, there's three leaves but one clover, look, that's, that's heresy, okay, the, there is the person of the Father, there is the person of the Son, there is the person of the Holy Spirit, three persons, one God, there's a beautiful little uh, image where it says God in the middle, and then on either side of the triangle, it says Father, Son, Holy Spirit, 
And there's lines connecting the circles together. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. But there's also lines connecting the outer circles. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father. There are three persons of the Godhead. And this is made painstakingly obvious to us at Jesus' baptism, where Jesus, the person of the Son of God, is in the water with John the Baptist, and God the Father speaks audibly, This is my Son, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. And the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus in the form of a dove. This is three persons, one God. This is a divine mystery. And Christians, uh, we need to let mystery be mystery that, that, that's, that's simply what we need to do so why are we talking about the trinity how do we go into the trinity from saint patrick well dust off well I say dust off i never have to dust this thing off it's always dusted off we're turning to the lutheran service book hymn number 604 uh, it's called i bind unto myself today or uh, otherwise known as the best the breastplate of saint patrick uh, the tune is an Irish tune, um, but it, it's more modern. Uh, link to uh, a video on YouTube of this beautiful, beautiful hymn of the church written supposedly by St. Patrick himself. Now, why did it, so it starts out, I bind unto myself today. This is strong language, uh, which I think is a strength of the hymn. In, in modern Christianity, where the songs and praise music is all flowery and watered down and makes you feel all ooey gooey inside. No, this is, this is full blown battle cry kind of stuff. Good, solid biblical theology. Um, <clears throat> I don't even know if I could say a mighty fortress written by Martin Luther, Martin Luther can hold a candle to the majesty and the militants of this. No, um, I bind unto myself today. Uh, these are strong words of St. Patrick, and he uses them because in the Celtic regions, in their, their pagan mysticism, they would bind this, that, or the other things to themselves and, and incantations and idols and, and all sorts of things. And so St. Patrick says, if you're going to bind something to yourself, bind this. Stanza one, I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three. I bind this day to me forever, stanza two, by power of faith, Christ's incarnation, his baptism in the Jordan River, his cross of death for my salvation, his bursting from the spicked tomb. Is that how you pronounce that? Yeah, his bursting from the spicked tomb his riding up the heavenly way, his coming at the day of doom, I bind unto myself today. I bind unto myself today. Yeah, I bind unto myself today, verse 3. The power of God to hold and lead, his eye to watch, his might to stay, his ear to hearken to my need. The wisdom of my God to teach, his hand to guide, his shield to ward. The word of God to give me speech, his heavenly host to be my guard. Against the demon snare of sin, the vice that gives temptation force, the natural lusts that war within, the hostile foes that mar my course. Or few or many, far or nigh, in every place and in all hours, against their fierce hostility, I bind to me those holy powers. I bind unto myself the name, the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one, and one in three, of whom all nature has creation, eternal Father, Spirit, Word, praise to the Lord of my salvation, Salvation is of Christ the Lord. Now, the, so I, I don't remember where I heard it, um, but I heard on a grammatical, on a linguistic level, the word gospel broken down. I mean, we're familiar with Godspell. Um, you know, that's a, a terrible, terrible Broadway musical. Uh, so, but I've heard it, I've heard it good spell. So a spell is words that do something. And in these Celtic regions in Ireland, these... Um, Druids. I had to think because I was almost going to say Druish, but that's a Spaceballs reference. 
<laughs> Great. This is what we need, a Druish princess. The Druids and the Celts, with their spells and incantations, what is a spell? It's a word that does something in their mind. Now, Christians, we have words that do something. See, the word of God creates, doesn't it? God said, let there be, and there was. Jesus is the word of God made flesh, and in that flesh, the word of God accomplished for us salvation on the cross. So um, an incantation, a spell, is a word that does something, and they would bind themselves, these incantations, to themselves. And then we have gospel, or good spell, these good words, these promises of God that give and deliver what they proclaim. So St. Patrick says, hey, if you're going to bind something to yourself, bind the name of the triune God. And Christians, we do this today, don't we? When we make the sign of the Holy Cross and say in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And what are we remembering? Well, in, in the Lutheran service book, I bind into myself today, hymn number 604, is in a portion of the hymnal called Baptismal Life. So we're binding to ourselves the name into which we have been baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So you're starting to see here why St. Patrick's Day is such a wonderful day for the Christian church because, gosh, the powerful working of God to regenerate St. Patrick's sinful heart in such a way that he who was a slave would look at his captors and see they are the captives. They are in bondage to sin and death and idolatry, and I must go preach the gospel to them. This, I would hope, is the Irish pride of the Irish people, that the, the church bells would ring on St. Patrick's Day, that this beautiful hymn, I bind unto myself today, would be sung from every cathedral in Ireland. And in the United States, what are we going to do? We're going to wear green. We're going to tell our kids about leprechauns. And then we're going to put, tuck them into bed with their babysitter and go out and get plastered on green beer and green margaritas and green God only knows what. And yeah, I appreciate the irony of the fact that I'm sitting here drinking a green beer. And actually, I do. Um, I will have a green beer or two um, on St. Patrick's Day. But as the saying goes... Irish for a day, Lutheran for life. That's what I always say on St. Patrick's Day. So there's a lot I think the Irish have to be proud of on St. Patrick's Day. They should celebrate the restoration of their homeland from paganism. And of course, with St. Patrick, as with any saint, there's going to be stories and myths and legends, not even just saints, political affiliate. Oh my gosh, the legends are on George Washington or Abraham Lincoln. Are you kidding me? These heroes of our nation? Legends are built up. Oh yeah, the legend of the poisonous snakes. Okay, yeah. yeah okay. Okay. But what we should focus on for St. Patrick's Day, what, what, what good is St. Patrick's Day, is the proclamation of the gospel that God the Father loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten Son so that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. And St. Patrick, by the power of the Holy Spirit, knew the love of the Father and did not, could not bring himself to the light in this, the death and destruction of the wicked. But he was called to go to his captors to proclaim to them, you are in bondage to sin, and you cannot save yourselves. But God has sent his Son to die for your sins and to redeem you. Be baptized then into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Bind to yourself this day the strong name of the Trinity. Jesus, dear Ireland, is for you too. I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade.